That isn't exactly how it's supposed to be, right? Can you spot the problem? Roughly 1.5% of the population, and thus much more of your patients, will present missing upper lateral incisors. And this is very annoying because, simply put, it causes an horrible smile. Yuke's mother's chief complaint was, it looks like her dog's teeth. And after seeing a picture of their Jack Russell Terrier, I had to admit she was right. Now, if you ever can, and even more if you're treating adolescents, try to close up the upper spaces. This will prevent, one, a long wait for implant placement, with some unstable Merriam bridges, and two, possible periodontal problems on those implants on the long run. After the initial alignment, the idea here is to mesialize everything with a power chain on a rectangular steel wire. Initially, the power chain runs between first bicuspid and first bicuspid. These mechanics will slowly close up the upper diastemas, but as the bicuspids move forward, the incisors will tend, as a reaction, to move backward. And this is something we don't want to happen, right? So we cream two stops, or two surgical hooks, hard on the mesial side of the first molars. This way, the arch wire cannot slide backward, and this will prevent the upper incisors from moving backward as well. Fantastic! Not. Because the force that moves the premolars forward will now indirectly fall back on the first molars that are being pushed backward by the surgical hooks. But whatever, we have to sacrifice something to mesialize everything and the first molars just volunteer. Now, upper diastemas have mostly been solved, but now we've got to push the molars forward. I had to admit I was tempted to place a couple implants in those spaces, but I rejected the idea and I moved along the right way, using third-class elastics to mesialize those poor molars too. No man left behind. As the first molars were getting into their final class 2 occlusion, I placed a power chain back on the second molars too, and I just patiently waited to see them coming forward. At that point, I debonded the inferior arch and splinted those teeth together, as this will prevent any possible relapse of the lower crowding over time. But it's not done yet. I kept the upper brackets in place, because despite all my efforts, the upper incisors had lost some torque during the treatment. What I needed was some more time for the wire to express the torque on those teeth, and some metallic ligature to strongly engage the wire in the slot. Check out how I've placed the brackets on the canines. They are upside down, so they can express the same tip but opposite torque. This is because I'm trying to hide their roots inside the bone for aesthetic reasons. Also, look at how the bracket positioning affected the level of the canine's gingival parables. Better this way, isn't it? And this is what we get. Not great, not terrible. Maybe a little additional coronoplasty will do. All right, that isn't bad. The hard thing about the composite reconstruction of those canines is the color. Canines are yellowish because they have more dentin, and this is kind of hard to hide. Roots are somewhat parallel, all is good. Exception made for the fact that after four years, he comes back for a retention control and some upper diastemas have reappeared. And maybe I should have splinted the upper teeth as well, in addition to the removable retainer I gave him. And orthodontist, I'll see you next time.